Very glad to see all who gathered in tonight. Going to start a hymn singing with 197. That's 197. We'll sing the first and last verse. 197. Tell me the old, old story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. Let's pull out all the stops and sing with all our heart. Or, sorry, 199. Just the next one over there. 199. God loved the world of sinners lost. And as we're singing this, if anybody has a favourite, you can have it picked out for after this one. First and last verse again, please. 199. <laughs> Sing it yourself. When this passing world is done, when has sunk yon ray and sun? I think we're not okay. We'll sing the first and last again of 380. <laughs>
599. My heart stirring one, 599, there are loved ones in the glory whose dear forms you often miss. We'll sing the first and last again, please, of 599. <laughs> said 104, aye? Yep. 104. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. First and last again of 104. joy and honour to be here this evening just to uh, share a word of testimony, uh, to share my life story. I would like to uh, bid you all a very uh, warm welcome. I would like to thank the elders and the committee and oversight of the church, especially Ian, for uh, inviting us along this evening, uh, even to share even uh, a few words and testimony. I would just ask you uh, if you would perhaps just uh, take your hymn book this evening and turn to hymn number 388. We're going to commence uh, the evening service uh, on 388. A lovely uh, hymn and a favourite of mine. So 388. Love with everlasting love, led by grace that love to know. Spirit breathing from above, 
thou hast taught me, it is so. O oh, this full and perfect peace, O oh, this transport all divine, in a love which cannot cease, I am his and he is mine. Just after the introduction, we'd ask you to just uh, raise and, and take to your feet, please, and we'll sing this lovely hymn together. Thank you.
tremendous singing and it's a great old hymn and I wonder this evening if you're in the meeting house can you truly say that I am his and he is mine what a blessing it is to be saved what a blessing it is to know him as your Lord and Saviour even as we look out to 2024 and sometimes the mind boggles and sometimes we're overwhelmed but it says in God's word when you're overwhelmed lead me to the rock which is higher than I thank you for your great singing it is a real blessing to hear that hymn sang so well we're just going to bow in a word of prayer ask the Lord to come and help in the meeting this evening help even in the proclamation of his word, help in the testimony, even all things that are committed uh, to the Lord this uh, week and even the remainder of the year. We just bow and ask the Lord to help, help us. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence through the precious name, the one name, Lord, no other name. And we thank you, Lord, for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for this church, we well, thank you, Lord, that the doors are open. There's an opportunity here in the gospel. We well, thank you, Lord, for the witness here, for the many, many years of witness. And Lord, we give you praise, Lord, for even the health and strength to be here this evening. We well, thank you, Lord, for journeying mercies. Lord, and as we've traveled this evening, we well, thank you, Lord, for your hand upon uh, directing our paths. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. O God, that, let that be our watchword, even for the year of 2024, the very first gospel evening service of this year. O Lord, help us even to look and ask you to direct us and to guide us. We thank you, Lord, for the service this morning. We thank you indeed, Lord, for uh, the Bible. We thank you that is true from cover to cover. From the very first word, the Alpha and Omega, Lord, Lord, we pray, Lord, most of all, that you be one of our number this evening. Lord, we can't do this in our own strength, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And Lord, the reason why we do it is because Christless eyes have never seen. Lord, help us even to lift the Lord Jesus Christ up tonight. Help us, Lord, to glorify him. Help us, Lord, even to speak to the sinner. Help us, Lord, even to uh, have a word and season for the backslider, that you would restore the backslider. And, Lord, that you would even edify your saints this evening. Lord, that you would give him a word of an encouragement. Lord, as we look out to 2024, what a difficult time that we're living in. What a world that we're living in. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would even drive the devil back tonight. We pray, Lord, that you would bind the devil. Lord, that you would give us free course, even in the gospel tonight. Lord, that you would speak, Lord, with your still small voice. And Lord, if there's one in the meeting tonight that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, Lord, that this would be tonight, even in this testimony tonight. Lord, as I would even utter a few words of testimony, we would pray, Lord, that this would be the experience for someone else tonight. Lord, those that perhaps are listening on the live stream, perhaps, Lord, that are in the meeting eh, for the first time, Lord, are listening for the first time, we pray, Lord, that you would do a work tonight. We pray, Lord, that you would take this meeting from the ordinary to the extraordinary. Lord, help us to have that expectant heart of the great things, Lord, that you're going to do even in this meeting, even as the week lies before us. Help us to have the expectancy, Lord, of the great things that you'll do. Help us to be an encouragement, even to our friends and family. Help us, Lord, even uh, to walk hand in hand with you, Lord. And we're asking, Lord, as, there, as it already has been said, that you would guide our footsteps. Lord, that you would direct our paths. And Lord, that you would help us even in our workplace. Lord, a little word in season. Lord, help us to take those opportunities. Will you give us those opportunities this week, Lord? And Lord, will you help the believers take them? Lord, guide the words. Remember those, Lord, that are sick. Lord, that are laid aside this evening. 
family members, Lord, that perhaps don't know the Lord as Savior. Oh God, we pray that you would speak to their hearts. Lord, we pray for each of this congregation, Lord, that is laid aside, perhaps in, in nursing homes, and we pray, Lord, that you would even be beside them, that the everlasting arms of the Savior would be with them, and Lord, that you would encourage them. Remember, Lord, the, the work of Sermon Audio as well. Lord, as your, your word is even a sent out, Lord, to the far-flung corners of this world, Lord. Lord, that it would fall on good ground. Remember our missionaries as well. Remember each one of them, the point of their needs. Lord, and we just pray for the ministers of uh, our denomination. Remember the, the week of prayer uh, that will commence tomorrow, Lord, in Armagh City. Lord, we pray that you will shake Armagh City for the Lord. Lord, that you would do a mighty work in that religious city, Lord, that cathedral city, but many, Lord, that don't know you personally as Lord and Savior. Oh, Lord God, we pray that you would use our ministers. You would guide and you, you would direct them. And, Lord, the, even the very city of Armagh would be shaken this week and turned upside down for the Lord and soul saved. Remember, the work's all due to commence again this week amongst the boys and girls, uh, the Sabbath schools, Lord, the youth fellowships, Lord, all uh, those outreaches, Lord, that you have even presented before us, Lord. We pray that you would undertake for them, Lord, that you would own each of them. You would own each of the, uh, the leaders, Lord, that you would give them that word, Lord, for the boys and girls. Oh, Lord, we, go, we pray for young boys and girls that, we be, that will be saved, that they would be saved young in life. Lord, that not only their soul would be saved, but their life would be saved and changed. Lord, we can, we can look at the world, and the world can look at us, but they can never, ever deny the changing power of the Savior when a life is transformed. Lord, do that tonight. Transform some soul tonight. Transform a, a, even believers tonight. Restore them to their, to their former glory, Lord, of their salvation, the joy of the Lord. And Lord, help us to have an encouraging time together this evening. That's all we ask, that you be one of our number. You've said in your word that we have not because we ask not. But Lord, we're asking humbly that you would descend upon us and Lord, be one of our number. In your name we pray. Amen. We're just going to at this stage ask Ian to come along and bring the necessary announcements for the week that lies ahead. Well, it is my joy to welcome each and every one of you to our gospel service this evening. Uh, those in the building and also those of you who join with us remotely. And we trust that you will know the Saviour's presence and his blessing. And that indeed you will go away rejoicing tonight at his word as those that have found great spoil. We're delighted to have uh, our brother, uh, Mr. Paul Elliott. We're glad to have you. Brother, it's good to renew fellowship with you. Um, we trust that as you testify and minister the word, that the Lord will richly bless you. Our brother is a member of our Armagh congregation. Just a few announcements to make uh, subject to the mind of the Lord. Do remember our week of prayer commencing tomorrow night and running right through Monday to Friday each evening at 8 p.m., Various uh, ministerial <laughs> brethren will be along to bring a devotional message each evening and do plan to join with us and start the week before the throne of grace. Wednesday at 7 sees the recommencement of our children's meeting. Friday at 8 we should say that our youth fellowship uh, will initially be joining our time of prayer up until after the message is brought. And then, as in previous years, they will be going to the complex for their season of prayer. Do remember the meetings of next Lord's Day, the early season of prayer at 9 a.m., the Sunday school and Bible class at 10.30, and then the Reverend David Priestley, 
Uh, one of our retired brethren will be along to bring the word at the adult Bible class and also at our times of public worship at 12 noon and 7 p.m. Do remember the times of prayer preceding both those services. Could we please remind you again of all the boxes? They are coming in, maybe they're all in at this stage, but if it is that your box still hasn't been brought in, could we remind you of it, please? The missionary, the Let the Bible Speak, and the school boxes, please. The free will offering envelopes are available. If you still haven't been able to take yours, please do take them even as you leave this evening. And for anyone who is a taxpayer who perhaps is not part of this scheme, if you do speak with our brother Andrew, he will be happy to uh, tell you more about the scheme and to assist you if you would like to join it. Uh, we did have our motto tax this morning uh, at our service, and there are bookmarks there. Um, they are there for you. Please do take them. They're free of charge, and boys and girls and adults alike, please do take them, and you can share them also with others if you wish. Next Lord's Day, there is a Sunday school teacher's season of prayer at 3.30. Please do remember that. And then finally, uh, our session have called uh, a meeting of our communicant membership, that meeting to take place on Tuesday night week, the 16th of January at 8 p.m., with a view to calling a minister. Uh, we know that there are those of you who are most faithful in your attendance at the place of prayer, but you're not a communicant member. Uh, and sadly, on this occasion, you won't be able to vote, but we do warmly welcome you to join with us even on Tuesday week. If you haven't already consulted the list, it is on the notice board there. Please do that, and if you have any queries, then speak with me and we'll uh, assist you as best we can. And then finally, let's continue to be much in prayer for this meeting, that the Lord might indeed grant us guidance and direction, even at this time. I'd like to thank Ian for his very kind words of welcome this evening. As I've already said, it is a real uh, honour and a privilege to be here. I'm no stranger to Kilkeel. Uh, obviously, this is the first time I've spoken here, but I'll be around a lot of uh, activities around Kilkeel, just down the road there with Roberta and James, and many an evening I spent down there. And But it, uh, I know our brother well, he would come up, uh, each year to our children's meeting and we would be uh, selecting books for the boys and girls and presents for the children. I'm involved in the Bright R uh, children's work and uh, we struck up uh, a friendship and when I'm in uh, Newcastle I always like to call in because uh, I always have usually a few pound vouchers to spend uh, from uh, my own children who uh, have uh, received them through uh, Sabbath school and one thing in the Bible class. But it's a real joy, Ian, to be along and we thank you very much for your kind words of invitation. We're just going to have a, our offering hymn now and a, we're turning to the words of 203, a, another testimony hymn. A, we'll keep our seats for the first couple of verses and then a, we'll all we'll invite you to stand then for the remaining verse, but uh, hymn number 203, I was sinking si deep in sin, sinking to rise no more, overwhelmed by guilt within, mercy I did implore. Uh, just keep our seats, and uh, we commence the singing after the introduction.
Again, I love to hear great singing, and that was great singing. And there's nothing I love more. I do a bit of singing myself around the churches, and there's nothing I love more than hearing a good piano player. And it was tremendous, very, very encouraging. You know, it gives that wee bit of a lift to the hymns. Uh, because we're here to praise God, and we're here uh, to raise our Ebenezer to God. And uh, it was great to hear such good singing and such good playing, sister. And we thank you for that. Just before uh, we come to my uh, testimony, I just want to again bow in a brief word of prayer, asking again that the Lord would help. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for uh, the meeting so far. So thank you, Lord, for the, the hymns of Zion that we have sang. We thank you, Lord, that even this ministry and song, Lord, is even edifying your saints, Lord, and uh, encouraging us. And Lord, how we need encouraged, how we need to be in the house of God and encouraged. We thank you, Lord, for these lovely hymns. We thank you, Lord, that indeed love lifted me. And many in here tonight, your love lifted them. And we thank you most of all for the cross. I have heard many, many times, Lord, preachers say that to make much about the blood and make much about the cross. And we thank you, Lord, that you died on that cross for me. We thank you, Lord, that uh, your salvation was free. It was once for all. It was atoning. And Lord, as we will come to, Lord, to the remainder of the meeting tonight, Lord, as this testimony is given, Lord, that you would even speak to saint and sinner alike. Lord, that you would bless, that you would encourage your people, that you would even give us that word, Lord, for the remainder of this week. We pray, Lord, that you be with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Just a short Bible reading. If you have your Bibles with you, I would invite you to turn to a little portion of Scripture, Isaiah chapter 12. A short little chapter of Isaiah, only six verses. I've shared this particular uh, piece of scripture many times, and most times when I testify, and I could say that it is my testimony in a nutshell. I don't intend to keep you too long tonight. I'll share a word of testimony, bring a few uh, challenges from the testimony, and then uh, we will make our our way home. But Lord, we just pray that you'll be with us. Oh God, we just thank you for this opportunity. And we thank you for the ability even to stand here and give a word of testimony. Isaiah chapter 12, verses 1 to 6. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou was angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation." And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of of thee. What a blessing. As I've said, that is my testimony. If I had simply just to finish now, there would be enough in that little portion of Scripture to explain to you the testimony of Paul Elliot. As it is, has already been uh, 
introduced by our brother Ian. I'm Paul Elliott. I'm from Armagh City. I am a member of Armagh Free Presbyterian Church. In fact, I have attended there all my life. I'll not tell you what age I am, but it's quite a while. And if I had just a little title for my testimony, it would be this. The faith as a boy brought grace as a man. And from the outset, I apologize. Perhaps some of you, have heard, some of you already have heard my testimony. But in defense of that, I have only one testimony to give. And uh, the story hasn't changed. But most of all, the Lord hasn't changed. He's been with me right through my whole life. You know, there's a little verse in the Bible that I also quote when I testify, and it says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child. Now, I've already said here this evening that uh, I haven't spoken here before, but I've attended here before. As a young boy, I, my mum had a caravan just along over by Lee Stone. I think that's the name of it. That's many, many years ago, and I, I have three brothers and a sister, so most weekends in the summer we were put in the car. I, I don't know how we travelled back then because I, it didn't seem to be any regulation of the seatbelts or legislation of the seatbelts, but... So there was definitely four in the back of the car anyway and a fight for the front seat. But we come up here every fr possibly on a Friday and uh, obviously I spent the weekend uh, over at the caravan park and we had much fun there. But on a Sunday, uh, a little widow little woman with five children come here on a Sunday morning and I don't know if anybody would remember her. I was just uh, asking uh, my mum the other day about our travelling experience up to here and then coming to church because I was sure that I come here and perhaps even attended uh, some of the Sunday school or went out with the Sunday school uh, during the service. But it was a tremendous time and it just shows you the commitment of my mother even on a, a holiday weekend to come even to the place of and the house of God. So when I say train up a child, that was a good start, wasn't it? Train up a child in the way he should go. That's the tuition of the child. That's training and tutoring your child in the way he should go. And when he is old, not that I'm overly old, but I'm old enough to remember. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And thank God, the, those years of attending all those meetings as a young boy, and even coming here during the summer months, that thank God that I haven't departed from it. But most importantly, God has not departed from me. You know, whether you're walking with the Lord or not, he sticketh closer than a brother this evening. And he's right by your side, just yearning for that stronger relationship with him. So just, that's just to give you a wee backdrop of my experiences of Moore and Free Presbyterian Church. And of course, I'm well aware of the missionary outreach here and I, uh, you know, uh, services that, that have uh, going on here. I know a lot of people in Kilkeel, believe it or not. But my testimony, the faith as a boy brought grace as a man. I, as I say, I'm married. Uh, Lisa's here tonight, my wife. Uh, and I'm married with three children. Uh, I've got Amy and Jessica and Sam. Uh, my two girls are now at teaching college and I have Sam, who's 14, at high school. And you know, right from the outset, could I say, friends, tonight, that I can't stand here on my own merits. 
because I know better than you. That's not the reason. I'm not here only for the reason because of our testimony to give. And my sufficiency comes from God and it's only because of a personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as my saviour. And from the outset of the meeting tonight, do you have that personal relationship with God? I'm not asking you tonight, do you know God? Do you know that he exists? I'm not looking into your life tonight or pointing fingers at you. I'm only asking you tonight, do you have a personal relationship with him? Have you asked him to forgive you your sin? You know, it says in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 5, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Everything that we do in our lives is because of the will of God, because the Lord wills it. I had, as already mentioned, I had the great privilege of being brought up in a Christian home. I was sent along to Sabbath school and lots of children's meetings and Bible camps and singing groups. I was a member of the Boys' Brigade. And I have to say, through my experiences as a child, that I had many Christian influences in my life. And those Christians uh, uh, taught me the truths of the Bible and that you just simply can't cherry pick the bits that you like and airbrush the bits that you don't like. They taught me that there was indeed a heaven to gain, but also that there was a hell. I developed an act as a young boy in something that we still do in our children's meetings of reciting scripture. And there was one reason, that, and I'll be truthful tonight, there was one reason why I'd done it so diligently, because they give you money. My, some of my uh, Sunday school teachers, uh, not Sunday school, but uh, some of my wee uh, children's meetings that I uh, went to rewarded you for learning your memory verses. And I remember learning the whole uh, chapter of Isaiah 53, back when I was a boy at 11 or 12, or possibly 13, and a faithful uh, teacher of, in Christ giving me 10 pounds. That was a lot of money back then, and I thought it was great. And I went that particular evening, and I recited Isaiah 53, and I said, well done, Paul. And he gave me 10 pounds. And I says, what, ver what portion do you want me to learn next week for 10 pounds? See, had the, had the business head on, you see. I was looking another £10, but hey, we'll come back next week and obviously hey, you give us memory verses and we got sweets and stuff for learning our memory, memory verses. And it is very important to reward children, children for doing uh, and learning God's Word. But it was simply hiding the Word of God in my heart that I might not sin against Him. Hey, I've talked about my sufficiency and I was spoken to very early in life about the importance of the soul. I was told by those leaders that we have a soul, each one of us have a soul that lives forever and because of Adam's sin, we will be cut off and totally separated from God forever because of a sinful soul. It says in that verse 1 of Isaiah, Thou was angry with me. And God was angry with me. And you would have to say, even as a, a, a child, why was God angry with me? Well, one reason, because of sin. And tonight God is angry with you because of your sin. And he's angry with every human being because of their sin. It says in Romans 5 verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for all have sinned including Paul Elliot including Paul Elliot so I realized that there was sin in my life even as a young boy because I was born in sin and we were all born in sin but I also realized and was taught 
that Jesus was a substitute for my sin when he died on the cross. And it was only because of the Lord Jesus Christ's death on the cross that then if I trusted him and him as my saviour, that I would enter into heaven. Now, you may be sitting in the meeting tonight or listening online, and everybody wants to believe tonight that they'll end up in heaven. Would not be great, but I have to be true to God tonight and tell you that, that will not be the case. Not everybody gets to heaven. I wish it was the case, but then Jesus wouldn't have to come and die on the cross for sin. It says in Revelation 21, verse 27, and listen to this, and there shall in no wise enter into it. That's heaven. Anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh an abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. God's record. And I'm making this simple. You have to remember I speak to children and boys and girls, but the gospel message is simple, friends, tonight. The Lamb's book of life. God's record is your name in it. That's a simple question. A yes or a no. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Have you asked the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive your sin? And is your name penned there? Has there been a time in your life? Now, I'm not asking you for a date. I'm not asking you for a time. But you know in the fullness of your mind, was there a time in your life where you could look back and say, yes, I asked the Lord for, to forgive my sin. And you know something this evening? If you've done that, then you're saved. You're saved. If you've asked the Lord to take your sin and to forgive you, and you've turned away and are walking with him, then thank God for the salvation and your name's in the Lamb's book of life. Oh, what an important book. You know, so important it was to me. I spoke about my sufficiency and my soul. I had a boy, he had seven. It was so important, the Lamb's book of life, my name was in it, that I had to get my name into it. So I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive my sin. Even as a young boy, I believe God was preparing me for the future. Verse 1 of Isaiah 12. Behold, God has, behold, God is my salvation. God is my salvation. Is he yours tonight? <coughs> that was simply my salvation. And I remember, I can't give you a date either, but I know I was seven at the time. And I know that I went home from a little children's meeting where I had heard God's word. So never ever dismiss the importance of children's meetings because I was saved in one. And I went home from that little children's meeting and I told my sister that I had got saved. Now I had a boy, he had seven. I didn't know really much about God's salvation, but I knew that I had sin. And I knew that Jesus died on the cross to take my sin. So that day, at a child age seven, behold, God is my salvation. And as I said, I, I, I believe God had, was preparing me for something at such a young age. I, that leads me to explain to you about my shock. One major event, age 11, left an indelible mark my life, a massive void in my life, and definitively shaped me as a person. Now, what I'm going to tell you that is not unique. It's the story of so many in Northern Ireland, and even in this area. On the 13th of April, 1983, 40 years ago, my father who was a sergeant and drummer 
with the Royal Irish Rangers, which was really known as the Territorial Army, was murdered in Katie Main Street by terrorists. An attack motivated by religious extremism. Now, I could stand here for the next 20 minutes and tell you and give you examples this evening of religious extremism in Northern Ireland, religious extremism in Israel and in Gaza and in Russia and Ukraine. It's a worldwide thing, religious extremism. One minute we were out playing, and I was playing with my brother outside, and the next thing I was being brought in to a pastor's house, the pastor of the, the local Elam church in Armagh, who lived beside us. And, you know, from a happy experience out playing with my brother or brothers, I was being brought in and told by the pastor that my father had been caught up in an, uh, an attack in Kiri in South Armagh. You know, I had the presence of mind at age 11 to ask that question when the news had been broke, broken to me by the pastor. Had my father survived? Had he been injured in the attack, in the attack or had he been killed in the attack? I was totally aware of the troubles in Northern Ireland. I knew some of my father's friends and colleagues had also been murdered. Unfortunately for my family and for me, as a son, my father had been killed in that attack, leaving my sister, who was 12, Gary and myself as twins, 11, then Jonathan at seven, and then my little brother, Stephen, who was one year old, didn't know his father. So I grew up as a child, remembering that I'd been saved at seven. I just, that, that happened in April in 83. At that particular time, I was going to do the transfer test I, to go to either some of the high schools or the Royal School in Armagh. And I have to tell you, I had absolutely no interest in school. What had happened was the only thing that was on my mind. And I just breezed through school. Not a care in the world. And a lot of my teachers, I have to say, were very sympathetic to the Elliot family and watched out and looked out for us in school, but had no interest in it. You know, I was a wee boy that grew up in the Troubles in Armagh. Armagh was a hotbed for terrorism. I knew what it was all about. I, many of my friends in my school had suffered the same loss. I think of a friend of mine that Watched his father being gunned down right before him. That friend is saved now. I had an uncle injured in a car bomb in Kilkeel. I thank God he survived. I remember kidnappings and I remember the bombs exploding in Armagh City. Massive explosions in Armagh. I remember watching out the back window of our house in Armagh that overlooked the, the Ulster bus station. I remember that station been, and the buses set on fire and the diesel tanks blowing up one after another. But there's one particular event that I remember the most. It was darkly. It was one of the worst because it was an attack on God's people. I knew the families. I went to school with the victim's children. I knew them. 
So that just gives you a bit of a background of the upbringing that I had. But I can tell you now, we had God with us. God was with us. You know, I was speaking to a friend yesterday. He said a very encouraging thing to me. He says, Paul, any time I was ever in your house, I mean the family home, my mother's house, he says, I felt the presence of God in it. He says, more than that, he said, I felt God's protection over your family. I can testify that this evening. That was actually a good a precursor for coming and giving my testimony this evening. What a blessing to have the protection of God upon you. And I believe right to this day that God has protected and he has been with us. So at age 11, I remember my father's funeral. He had just 38 entered Armagh Free Presbyterian Church for the last time. My father, back then, years and years ago, my father had only been saved at, at age 30, I believe, but had got involved in the local uh, Free Presbyterian Church. And uh, I'm told that he actually laid the paving slabs, helped lay the paving slabs right to the door of the church. So he was involved in the work there. I remember him being off duty or being on duty all night in the, in the army barracks and standing in our Free Presbyterian Church sometimes with his uh, khaki army clothes on straight out of uh, duty and straight to church. You know, so I remember my father ended that church for the last time in a military funeral. The Union flag was draped on his coffin. His regimental hat and belt was on top. And I remember the service. I remember the gun salute at the graveside and the piper's lament at the graveside. And with all the pomp and ceremony, my father had been lowered into the ground. And that's when it hit me. At a boy age 11, I hadn't even cried because I was so hardened to the things that were happening in Northern Ireland. <coughs> but that's when it, it hit me and I cried. And I don't think I cried since when I was growing up. I became very hard and wanted to be strong for those that were around me. I want to speak to you about my spiritually earthly father. As I described to you, his funeral, what a way to go. You know, friends tonight, if you were cut off suddenly like that, would you be ready? But what a way to go. My father was a great example to me in life as a Christian. He was a great example in prayer. And we've heard our brother speak about prayer and the importance of it. You know, the very day that my father lived his last day in this world, he was at the early morning prayer meeting at 6.30 in Armagh Free Presbyterian Church, his final day on earth. So not only was he a great example in life, he was a great example in death because he was simply absent from the body and present with the Lord. That morning he was praying to Savior, praying for me, no doubt, praying for my family, praying for his brothers and sister, praying for his work colleagues, praying for the work of the church. That day, that morning he was praying to Savior. That evening he was with him. And you know something, what gives me great comfort, he wants you're in the glory land. He wouldn't have wanted to come back. What a great truth that is. You know, you can ask the question, how did a young boy, how do you cope? And as I've already said, I was not unique because there was so many in the Armagh area. There was so many 
in my year and class that had the same. But in verse 1 it says, Thou comfortest me, and the Lord comforted me at my lowest point. It says, Blessed are those that mourn, as they will be comforted. I simply coped, and my family coped, by leaning on the promise of, of God. Verse 2, two says, <coughs> excuse me, Behold, God is my salvation, I will trust. Our sermon this morning was about trusting, trust and obey. The sermon was actually entitled, titled this morning, Trust and Okay. <coughs> and you know, if you trust the Lord for everything, it will be okay. And not to be afraid, it says in verse 2 of Isaiah 6, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength. I was saved, and then I had, it, had to trust, and then the Lord removed the fear. You know, I had a storm in my life. I was angry and bitter. There was lots of groups and organizations that I identified exactly how I felt. And they knew it. And they knew how I felt. And many, many times I could have been led into the dark side of the things in Northern Ireland. But remember what I said at the very outset. When the Lord hides the word of God in your heart, that you might not sin against him. And I thank God that he displayed the keeping power of his salvation in my life. And it was simply, it was simply walking with the Lord. God kept me from it. I knew it was wrong to take the law into your own hands. It says in Romans 12, verse 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place on the wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Matthew 10, verse 28, Fear not them, them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him that is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And I believe that God has repaid. Isaiah 54, verse 17. And this is the heritage of my father. This is my heritage. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment Thou shalt condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. I believe my father was a servant of the Lord. And therefore, the weapons will not prosper. And neither they did. I could go on to tell you how they didn't. But sometimes it's best not said. God took me down other avenues to focus my attention away from perhaps a darker, a darker path. And he took me down the avenue in the shape of a, a band that I got involved in in South Armagh, a band called Drum Derg, I'm sure many of you know. And he used that to, to draw my attention away and my brother's attention away from what had happened. I had a great passion for marching bands. I still do. I inherited it from my father, my father was a, a drummer uh, with the regiment band. He was also uh, a drumming tutor amongst a lot of pipe bands in the area. Uh, my grandfather was a, a pipe band drumming tutor as well. I now tutor drumming myself. My 14-year-old son has started to tutor drumming. And, you know, the Lord has used me in that marching band scene. And I had asked the Lord to endorse it and asked him to give me even a little work in that. And he has. I get many, many opportunities where I have a great privilege and an influence on people within that marching band scene. You know, they need the Lord. You know, it gave me, it gave me great success in the band. I... Back in 2016, we were asked to play at 
a garden party for, at that time, it was Prince Charles, who's now the king. Uh, we had went to, I personally met the king, or the prince back then. We went to the battlefields twice over in Belgium and France. And it's a culture and a tradition that I'm not ashamed of. But it's not the most important thing. I believe our faith is based on Christianity. Back years and years ago, uh, our forefathers were at least God-fearing. And on the 30th anniversary of my father's passing, we decided to unveil a lambeg drum in his memory. And we invited the Reverend McMillan from Armagh Free Church to come and give a gospel application at the dedication of that drum. I stood up and I testified not my own testimony, I gave my father's testimony that evening. And you know something? Some of my family members were saved through it. So that's drawing waters out of the wells of salvation. God has given me a wonderful life. He has given me a great wife, a great, honest human mother, and a very understanding wife. And, you know, he's given me a, a service for speaking and singing, especially amongst the band fraternity. You know, verse 2 of Isaiah says, He has also become my salvation I, and has given me a work for him. And it led me back to my, uh, Armagh Free Presbyterian Church where I got involved in the children's work. And it's been great. And I just want to finish by saying this. Sacrifices and suffering none more so than the sacrifices of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. I have first-hand experience of sacrifice and suffering. My father sacrificed his life in the service of this country, and we have suffered as a result of it. But why did it happen? You know, why did the good die young and sometimes evil is rewarded with long life? I, you know, all I can do is give an answer and say, these things happen because God is not willing that anybody should perish. Tragedies happen because God has to knock that little louder to get through to people. And I want to ask the question tonight as I close, what about you tonight? You've heard my story. Perhaps you have suffered the same loss has someone's death spoken to you? Is there someone in heaven tonight belonging to you? And can you say within your heart of hearts that you'll be re reunited with them? Are you saved tonight? Perhaps you're in the meeting tonight or listening online and you're breaking someone's heart. Your parent, your wife, your husband, because of your indifference to the things of God. You know, it's the most important thing. When we see evil and wickedness abounding through this world, the most important thing and the common denominator in the whole life today is whether you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. What are you depending on to get to heaven? I had the great blessing of having Christian parents but my Christian parents couldn't get me to heaven. I had to have a personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as my saviour. Going to church, that's good, and we should. It says not to forsake the assembling of the saints together. We should go to church, but that doesn't get you to heaven. You need to know him as your Lord and saviour. Religion, tradition and heritage of something that means a lot in my life and our culture. Good works is good, but it won't get you to heaven. You need to ask the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour to take away your sin, and you need to do it now. It says, my spirit shall not always strive with man. And you know, the very first Gospel evening service and Warren Free's Presbyterian Church, you could be rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ for the very last time. 
you mightn't hear his voice again. You know, I had the privilege of meeting the future king of England, but that pales into insignificance the day I met the, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. You know, I have first-hand experience of sudden death in a family. You know, we all think that we're invincible. We all think that we're unsinkable. Didn't they say that about the Titanic ship? They said not even God could sink it, but it sank. So don't delay. You know, you've got to surrender your life to him tonight and ask him to be your saviour. And friends tonight, that is simply just my testimony. Many of it have heard it before, but I pray that it'll bring a blessing uh, to you all this evening. And we're just going to uh, change our positions and sing the final hymn this evening. I thank you very much for listening. I thank you for your attention tonight. And I pray that the Lord's still small voice will continue to speak on. The final hymn to me this evening is <coughs> Years I Spent in Vanity and Pride, Caring Not My Lord Was Crucified, Knowing Not It Was For Me He Died on Calvary. As we sing this hymn tonight, be assured of your salvation. Be sure that you're for heaven and you're for, your, and you're for home. We'll sing a verses 1, 3, and 4. Rising to sing after the introduction. <coughs> Father, we just thank you for the meeting this evening. We thank you, Lord, for your word uh, has gone forward tonight, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that it would bring forth much fruit. We pray now, Lord, that you would uh, bless each one, each family that is represented, and that now you would part us with your blessing. In your name we pray. Amen.